Hey guys, about to play a match with the Jeskai Tokens deck and the two-man queues, as you can see. Uh, the guy who was in it just left, or... Oh, there's a guy. Alright, so, see how our deck does against what is probably, you know, a very competitive opponent. Hmm. Seems to be a little slow, though. And he has a 61-card deck, which is interesting, but that doesn't always mean anything. There was a while there back in the day, like, I don't know, 10 years ago in Magic, where people said having 61 cards was actually better, but... All right, this is a pretty strong hand. To secure the wastes, an abbot of Corral Keep. Uh, sounds good to me. Um, bad news is we don't really have, like, we don't really want to play abbot of Corral Keep on turn two if we don't have to, but we might have to, so... If we do so, we'll do so. All right, Caves of Coilos could be Abzan... Okay, so we're going to play one of our lands that comes into play tapped. Um, I think I'll start with the Swiftwater Cliffs. Next turn, I'll probably just play the Windscarred Crag and pass, especially if my opponent hasn't done anything. Um, then we have Fiery Impulse up, and we can play our Abbot and then play most things that he would hit. Uh, oh, so we're playing an ally deck, so welcome to the new standard. Zolaport Cutthroat. Okay, well, we're going to have to kill that. Quickly, I think uh, it's probably a major part of our opponent's strategy, um, but I think we'll wait to see since there's no pressure on us right now, really. We'll just play another land that comes into play tapped. Draw a Jeskai Ascendancy, which is very nice, um, and we'll hold up our Fiery Impulse uh, to use should our opponent do something uh, crazy. I'd actually rather kill Calastria Healer, um, so that might be what I do. Uh, does this let him return it to his hand? Yeah, it does. So that's kind of annoying. I have to wait till he taps out to uh, deal with the dude. Okay, and he is. Let's see what he's playing. Drawn his emissary. Okay, well, that's a bigger problem. So I'm going to kill that instead, um, which will make us lose one life and him gain one life from his cutthroat. But that's okay with me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use Fiery Impulse on the flyer. Puts him at 21 and us at 20 because of his Olaport Cutthroat. Wow, two Jeskai Sentences. I don't know if I want two, but... Um, we're going to play our Abbot of Coral Keep. See what we hit with him. Well, we hit an Exemplars, which is not something we can play, so that's a little frustrating. Um, but we will play a land, uh, and we'll end our turn there. We can play out the Ascendancy soon and start getting all kinds of crazy triggers. It'd be nice to have another creature out there, um, but Secure the Wastes can do that for us, basically. So Whether I want to take a turn off to play a Jeskai Ascendancy is the question. Um, so I don't know that I want to. If he swings, yeah, we're just going to take that. We can use Secure the Wastes basically as a removal spell um, next time he swings with that, you know. So that may be our plan. Okay, nothing from our opponent. Uh, okay. Since our opponent isn't pressuring us, I'm kind of tempted to drop an Ascendancy before I do anything else. And I think I will because it just makes everything better. So we'll play our Ascendancy. She'll pump our Abbot up to a 3-2. And we will swing with the Abbot for 3 damage. Alright. So now our Secure the Wastes, the two Secure the Wastes we have in our hand are just going to be disgusting uh, on future turns. So that's something our opponent will have to worry about. See what he's playing. Expedition Envoy does not concern me a whole lot. Okay, so he's attacking with his Zolaport Cutthroat. We'll take it again. Okay, hey, there's an Exemplars too, but I think it's pretty clear that our line of play is to... Uh, you secure the wastes. Um, 
We're going to swing here. If he blocks, I'll use Secure the Wastes to pump him up to a 4-3 and untap him. Um, but if he doesn't block, I'll just let it do two and then have Secure the Wastes be our big surprise move. So uh, we're going to get in there one way or another, probably. So... Okay, so we're going to use Secure the Wastes now. And like so. To let us kill his creature, untap our abbot, and put four uh, warriors into play. And we get to uh, draw a card and discard a card. Might be killing our dude, but that's pretty okay. Yeah, what? Oh, he's making him indestructible. Well, that I'm really okay with. If he'd waited, he actually could have killed our abbot, because it'll be up to a 4-4 eventually. Um, we're going to use the drawing ability. And uh, I think, I mean, having two Jeskai Ascendancies isn't bad, per se, but having to take off a turn from being aggressive is kind of annoying, and that's not really what I want to be doing. So we don't get to kill his creature. Uh, but we do have a bunch of guys in play helping us go wide. Um, and I decided to keep the land because, you know, we have Secure the Wastes. So uh, I think we end our turn there. See what our opponent has planned for us. Double ally encampment now. See what the opponent does here, but we're in a pretty good position, obviously. If he swings, I just take three. Um, yeah. Okay. Our opponent doesn't seem to have a whole lot he can do. Okay, roast is interesting. Um, I think I'm going to use it on the Zolaport Cutthroat. It'll pump our whole team a bunch. Um, and. Uh, that seems good. I could play... No, I can't actually do that. I can't play my Exemplar and then Roast because my land came into play tapped. Okay, your opponent taking a while to decide on whether or not I get to gain one life, I guess. But yeah, we'll Roast his old court Cutthroat. This will be a 4-3. These will all be 2-2s. Two um, and then I'll still have mana available to use Secure the Wastes if I want to. So seems pretty good. So we're going to tap it like this. Uh, yeah, and we're going to go Roast, which pumps our whole team. So one of the few, not, it's the only card in the main deck, actually, that's not an instant, uh, and it is kind of annoying it, that it's not. Against this opponent, we probably side it out because his creatures are all small, so we'll draw a card, uh, and this time I think we do discard the land. Um, so it deals with that guy. All right, and then we're going to... He could have bounced it to his hand, but he didn't, interestingly. Uh, and then we're going to just swing with everybody. This time, if he blocks, I probably just let the trade happen and have Secure the Wastes as a uh, way to untap all my guys next turn on his the combat phase, if that becomes necessary. All right, so he's blocking. Uh, and yeah, I think we just let the trade happen uh, and, you know, bring him down to eight. Um, and we end our turn there. Okay. It's likely that we win. I mean, especially if he only plays one creature right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because now we just play Ojutai Exemplars and then tap that down. And then uh, when we play Secure the Wastes and then swing for the win. So that should be game um, since our opponent has tapped out. Okay, Hordling Outburst makes things interesting. Um, but yeah, we're just going to play our Exemplars. Make sure we leave the right mana up and we do. Uh, so we'll play the Exemplars. Um, and then we'll play Secure the Wastes for one. Which, of course, pumps the whole team. But most importantly here, 
we can tap his guy down and swing in for the win. All right, there's game one. Okay, so we definitely side out Roast against this guy. Uh, his biggest creature that we saw is a flyer, so Roast isn't even good against it. So we're siding out Roast for a fiery impulse so we can more effectively kill all of his creatures um, for sure. Question is Rending Volley. I don't think it's good enough against him, but oh yeah, we'll take that Roast out. Valorous Stance isn't good against him. Jeskai Charm could be good against him. But not any better than I think Stasis Snare can be. Because we can use Stasis Snare like in response to him playing an ally to keep a rally trigger from happening and things like that. Same way Jeskai Charm can, except it's a little more permanent. Uh, and we don't want our negates uh, against this guy. I think we're good as is other than that roast. So now all of our non-creature spells can be played at instant speed, which, well, other than our ascendancy, of course. But uh, that's pretty helpful. I mean, Roast did come in handy in that game, but it wasn't any better than a Fiery Impulse or Wild Slash would have been, so we just had to pay two for it, and it wasn't a surprise, so this deck does better when you can surprise your opponent. Okay, so our opponent has a 62-card deck now, so he sided something in and didn't take something out, <laughs> so it's interesting. Unfortunately, this opponent's deck doesn't seem to be like the most tier one deck you'd expect to see in a standard two-man queue, but, uh, you know, allies could be a thing, and this guy may be onto something, uh, but we didn't see much removal, and we didn't see like the best curve in the world in his deck, uh, and most of his creatures were pretty easy for us to kill, but it's still good to sort of show, you know, at your Friday Night Magics, there are going to be people playing, you know, ally decks with smaller creatures and things like this, so, you know, this video will still get posted. Uh, but hopefully in the next two videos we play, you know, the usual tier one stuff. The opponent seems to be taking his time, so I will pause until uh, the game actually begins. Oh, it just be our opponent conceded. So we'll see if I actually post this one. <laughs> if I do, it means I ran out of time and couldn't record a third video like I normally want to because our opponent scooped, so... Not the most interesting, but in game one, you know, you saw what the deck can do with Jeskai Ascendancy and so forth. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.